Hi guys and welcome. For the purpose of the hesitation problem on the ADA-89 models, I want to just show you how to dismantle the carburetors and what you should be looking for as problem wise. We start here, before you remove the carburetors, when you have the air filter off the bike, you need to start the engine and check that these two little jets here, which are powered by the accelerator pump, when you twist the throttle, you have a smooth flow of fuel through these. This, when you twist the throttle, the fuel goes directly down into the manifold and gets to the engine very quickly in order to take up any slack that's in the system before the carburetor jets come into play themselves. Okay. This is the accelerator pump which is powered off the throttle and when you twist the throttle this little pump action comes into play which sends extra fuel up this little hole here. You need to make sure that all these passages are clear and working fine. If not, this may be the cause of your problem and you may need to go no further. When you're removing the top plate and the heat exchanger on the bottom of the carbs, these screws are very tight and you need a good fit here. This is an impact driver which works very well. There's plenty of force behind the unit. Otherwise, if you peel the heads of the Phillips screw in the carburetor, you're going to have to find it very difficult to remove these. For the purpose of keeping the video short, I have already dismantled these carbs and I'm just going to remove the, the, the bottom plate here and this gives you access to the jets. The first point here is that in doing the flow tight, in order to determine the exact measurement, what you need to do is you just let the, the float fall into a seated position without turning the carburetor upside down. You need to just let the flow drop to its natural position. I'm using a verniers here uh, set at 7.5 millimeters and you need to just measure from the carb body across the top of the, the float. When you remove the float pin, the retaining pin, you then have inside the float needle. You need to be very careful with this as it is a very delicate mechanism and the plate holding it is what you move in order to make up the difference in sizes. Below that, I'm not going to remove it here, this is a, a, another one. Hold it. The float valve needle has a little gauze on the end of it in order to help stop foreign matter from entering the carb chamber. When you're removing this you need to be careful because the two pillars that hold the float pin can be very delicate. In this I have ground a 10mm socket in order that it fits down neatly into the chamber and it can be removed safely without any further damage. This is the main jet housing. This particular one here is the secondary jet system. By removing this, and you need to be very careful that you have a correct fitting screwdriver. This one is loose at the moment, so I have no problem with it. When you remove this, the retainer cap is secured with two rubber rings attached to the pilot jet. As said, this can be difficult to remove. Be careful with it. When you remove it, you will see here the pilot jet. This is the, the, the jet we're after to replace. Again, ensuring a very good fitting on the, the jet itself in order to release it. If not, what may happen is you may break off the side as the, the unit is only made of soft brass. So you need, I can't stress that you need a very good fit here. When you remove this, that is the, the jet in particular. This one is a number 65. 
just for the purpose of the video I have installed two small rubber rings these are not the correct fit but when you replace your new jet in and you screw on the retaining cap you need to be very careful in pushing this home a small bit of grease on the rubber will it will ensure that you get a smooth action of the cap going on when you put the secondary jet back in you will tighten it home when you have it home in the position remove it again just to make sure that the cap is sitting flush with the top on. when you have the carbs dis dismantled it would be a very good idea to soak them in carburetor cleaning solution for example in the cap here you have a small passageway from one side to the other you need to make sure that all these passageways are clear and free from debris one. in the side of the carb body this is the pilot, the pilot idle adjuster this particular model has the d-shaped screws there is a special tool required for this I don't have it but what I did was I cut a small channel across the, the body of the carb in order that I could insert a screw screwdriver and remove the jet okay when you remove the idle adjuster needle this is very very fragile it comes with a rubber ring a small washer and a small spring you need to remove these all together if you blow air through the system you most certainly will lose these across the garage floor for the new adjustment you need to screw the needle valve to its seated position very very lightly and then return out two full turns this is your starting position for your new measurement when you have reinstalled your carburetors on the bike and fitted the air filter housing you need to resync the carburetors and do the idle drop procedure before you assemble any of the any more of the bike please take it for a small ride down the road especially at slow riding to ensure that your hesitation problem is gone